What is up guys? In this lesson we're going to be looking at how we can create a Minecraft bot in Python. It's going to be able to mine diamonds and it's going to be able to avoid lava once it runs into that. Alright, so the first thing we should do is go ahead and open up Minecraft because here we need to collect a few resources for our program. And the first thing we need to do is take a screenshot of our options menu. So I'm just going to do Command Shift plus 3 and this is going to be different on Windows. Just find a way to snapshot the screen. Then we also need to take a snapshot of the lava because we're going to be using something called OpenCV to actually recognize that there is lava. So it's going to scan the screen and it's going to locate the lava and it's going to make sure that our character runs backwards as soon as it notices the lava because of course we do not want to jump into it. So once again, I'm going to take a snapshot of the whole screen so command shift plus three and I'm going to pause Minecraft for now because we will not be using it until we finish the program. But what's important to note is we took some screenshots and here I have the options menu and here I have the one of the game. So first we're going to open up the one of the options menu on full screen and we're just going to take another screenshot of this part right here. To translate it, because right now it's in Italian, we want to get the resume the game button. So take a screenshot of that, and then you can safely delete this options menu. And we're going to call this one start underscore game. So it should look something like this. As you can see, it's the button that starts the game. Then let's go ahead and open the second screenshot, which contains the lava, because we want to screenshot the lava. And I found this to be the easiest way to take these screenshots because in Minecraft, of course, you have a cursor and it's very hard to move the cursor when you're in the game. So taking a screenshot of the screenshot will be perfect. So just go ahead and try to get the lava as close as possible like this. Now we can close this, delete the screenshots. We're going to move the lava next to the start game and we're just going to name it lava. So the next thing we have to do is go ahead and open up PyCharm or whatever editor you have for code. And I'm using Python 3.9 for this, but 3.8 and earlier should be fine. But we need to open up a new project. And of course we have our main.py, but we're going to go ahead and right click on our project folder, create a new directory, and it's going to be called images. Then we're going to go ahead and drag the two images we took from earlier because we will be using these screenshots for recognition. So as you can see, we have that one from earlier and we have the lava image. Up next, we have to go ahead and open up terminal because we need to install a few packages. The first package is going to be opencv. So pip install opencv dash Python and then tap on enter. Then we should go ahead and install a package called pillow and this is used for handling images. So it's important we install pillow. And finally, we should go ahead and type in pip install and we should insert pyautogui, which will help us with simulating key presses. And right after that, we can go ahead and close the terminal and type in import pyautogui as pt. And then from time, we are going to import sleep. And the first thing inside here we're going to do is create a helper function. So we're going to add a comment that says helper function and we're going to create a function called nav to image. And this is going to help us with navigating to any image we provide to the program. So first we need an image path, followed by the amount of clicks we want to perform on that image. And we're also going to provide an offset of X, which will be set to zero, and an offset of Y, which will also be set to zero initially. And those are just used in case we want to change the position of the mouse just by a few pixels or by a lot, it's good to have that for later. Next, we need to go ahead and create a position, which is going to equal pt.locate on center screen. And we want to locate the image and we are going to give it a confidence level of 0.7. So as long as it is 70% resembling the pixels we have provided, it's going to find it on the screen. If you leave this at 100%, it's going to be very hard to find that pixel perfect image and you'll probably never find it. If the tolerance is too low, then you're probably going to recognize everything as the image that you're searching for. So it's not very accurate. 
So it's important you give it some leeway between 0.6 and 0.9. Up next, we need to define what happens if it cannot find the image. So we have to go ahead and type in if the position is none, which means it couldn't find the image we defined. Then we're going to print a simple log statement that says that the image we inserted was not found. And we're going to return zero as an exit code. Else, we're going to go ahead and type in pt move to, which will move to a position. And we have the position up there as soon as we locate the image. And we will add a duration, which will be set to 0.1 seconds. So that's how fast the mouse cursor moves to the location we need it to go to. Then in case we also want to adjust it, we can go ahead and type in move relatively. And we're going to insert the offset X and the offset Y. So these are optional in case you wanted to move a few more pixels to the right, or a few more pixels down or up, you can provide that by adding the offset up here. And we're going to set the duration to 0.1 as well. Next, we also want to define a click mechanism. So we're going to set the clicks to the amount of clicks that we define. And we want to put an interval between each click, which is going to be set to 0.3 seconds. So that's going to cover the helper function. Right below that, I'm going to add these three comments. And that is because we're going to create a function that moves the character and defines how we can place blocks and delete blocks. So as you may have noticed, I provided X as the key for attacking in Minecraft and C as the key for placing a block. And by default, your left click is the attack and the right click is the placement. So inside your settings in Minecraft, you're going to have to go ahead and change the key bindings to map the attack to a different key such as X and to map the placement key to something such as C. And those are the ones I picked. Of course, you can pick any letters you want. Just find ones that are comfortable so that we can use them later. But right below that, we're going to type in def move underscore character. And that's going to take first a key press, which key we want to use, a duration for how long we want to hold that key down, and the action, which by default will be set to walking. And the first thing we should do is go ahead and type in PT key down. And inside here, we just have to insert the key press. Next, we need to define what happens if an action is called. So if the action is equal to walking, which is the default, of course, then we're going to go ahead and print walking. L if the action is equal to attack, then we just have to go ahead and type in PT key down and we want to specify X because that is the attack key. Next, we need to define a delay so that we have some time in between the key down. And this one's going to be set to the duration. And after the sleep function, we can go ahead and type in PT key up and say that we want to lift X. And we also need to go ahead and type in PT key up for whatever key press we have defined. So this is going to take care of moving our character. Right below this, we're going to go ahead and create a function called locate lava, so we can make sure that we avoid that later. And it's going to first take a position, which is going to equal PT locate center on screen. And now we can go to our project, open up the images folder, right click on the lava, and we're going to copy the path. And we're only going to take the path from the content root and insert it as a string over there. So this is the lava image we had. And since lava can have many different angles and it can have many different shapes, we're going to have to set the confidence level to something extremely low, such as 0.3 or 0.4. But we will just insert 0.3 for now, which means maybe it might even confuse it with a torch, but it's better to be safe than sorry. But we also need to check if the position is none, it means there is no lava. So we can just go ahead and return false. Else, we want to make sure that we can move the character backwards to avoid being burnt to death. So here we can go ahead and type in move the character and the key press we want to specify is S and we will move back for two seconds. And we're also going to print to the console that we found lava. And we can return true because we did locate some lava. Now all we have to do is glue all of this together. So the first thing we have to do is start the game. So go ahead and type in start the game. And to do this, we'll go ahead and type in nav to image and we need to insert the image for start game. So go ahead and right click there, 
copy path, get from the content roots, and insert it inside there. We're going to ask it to click three times just to make sure it starts the game. And we can actually go ahead and test this immediately. Just remember to insert a delay such as three seconds before you start the program because Pi Auto GUI only works on the main screen. And in general, you have a dual monitor. So often what I do is work on my second monitor on the code and run all of the tests on my main monitor, which is the main screen of my MacBook. So in case you don't have a dual monitor, you're going to have to provide a sleep. So it gives the program some time to wait before we go to the main screen. All right, so now I reopened Minecraft so we can go ahead and test it. The goal for this right now is for the mouse pointer to go to this button here and click on it. So let's go ahead and right click on our main program, click on run and quickly switch the screen to the game. And as you could see, the mouse pointer moved incredibly fast and started the game for us. So that's the first step in making this work. Now let's go ahead and finish the program. So here we're going to create a variable called duration and I'm just going to set it to 10. This is for how long you want your bot to continue running. 10 does not necessarily translate to seconds, but it does translate to a time frame that's good for yourself. So while the duration is not equal to zero, and the first thing we have to do is check if there is no lava, then we're going to continue mining. So we're going to check if not locate lava because it returns a boolean so it's checking if there is not lava in other words then we can go ahead and move the character forwards by holding down w of course because w is the move is the move forward key and we're only going to set this for two seconds but of course you should adjust this based on your pickaxe and we're going to go ahead and specify the action as attack because that's what we specified the options to be over here Else, if it does happen to find some lava, we want to break out of this loop immediately because we happen to find lava and we do not want to continue mining the lava, of course. And it's also very important each time we go through this loop, we decrement the duration by one so that the program can end after 10 times. And we can also go ahead and print the time remaining because it's always fun to log stuff. And we can add the duration. But with that being done, let's go ahead and test the program. And to do that, we're going to have to rebuild what I had earlier. So we're going to place a block there. Now we can put some test blocks. As you can see, I inserted some diamond there. Then we need to switch back to game mode slash survival. And you're going to have to angle your pickaxe slightly down so that we can mine two blocks at the same time. So kind of like this. We're going to go back and we're going to start the program by right clicking on main and going back to our screen. And of course it has the auto start feature. So it's going to find the button and then it's going to start moving. So as you can see, we moved backwards this time for the simple reason that the program thought we found lava because we put this confidence level to 0.3, which is incredibly low. It even thought that the torch was lava. So let's go ahead and set that up to 0.4 and we're going to try again. So now we can go ahead and right click and restart the program. And as you can see, as soon as it saw the lava at 40% recognition, it decided to back off and end the program. If we go ahead and check the logs, you're going to notice it happened to take two steps. It was walking and then it found the lava and the program ended. So of course we can also do this in a different direction if we wanted to. We can go back, we can rerun this program and we can just go back to our main screen. From this point onward, it's going to mine as long as it can or as long as you set the duration to. Right there, it's, it thought it saw some lava, which is absolutely wrong. So we might have to go ahead and set the confidence level to 0.5. And as you can see, there's a lot to be done with this program. It is in its very basic form, but uh, let's go test it one more time. We'll go here. And the first thing to do, of course, is test whether it can recognize this lava. 
So to do it, we'll go ahead and run the program, change over here. It will start the program and it's going to back off immediately because it found the lava. Let's run it one more time to make sure it actually works. And let's set the pickaxe, of course, otherwise it's going to be difficult. And that is perfect. But anyways, guys, that's actually all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. And maybe in a future tutorial, I'll show you how we can move the mouse pointer and do some more complicated tasks. But just to get started, I thought this was a great project. And of course, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, with that being said, have a wonderful week and I will see you in the next lesson.